All right, we're live. So today we have an incredible guest. Uh, this is a guest that I've been um, trying to get on for a little while. We talked in San Diego and, uh, you know, we kind of talked about some ideas for the kind of stream that we'd like to do. And uh, he's, a, he's a phenomenal artist. He's been one of my favorites. Really about since. some ideas for the kind of stream that we'd like to do. And uh, he's a... There we go. We had an echo. Oh, <laughs> um, he's been one of my favorite artists since before I broke into comics. Uh, this he, he worked at Marvel, Continuity Comics, and then Marvel. He was in the X office doing a lot of X-Men stuff, a lot of that early 90s, really the stuff that got me into comics and made me excited about comics. And then he's moved on from there to do a ton of other projects from Boom Studios through uh, Image Comics and also movie designs, video game designs, uh, storyboards and illustration work. And you can really see throughout the course of his, I'm gonna go through this whole thing. I said I wasn't gonna do this. I just wanted to do a quick intro so we could talk about this. But we have Dan Panosian, one of the greatest artists in contemporary comics, uh, a great guy. And um, uh, not only a great artist at drawing quiet scenes and real looking people, but also uh, action and drama and uh, some of my favorite inks in the business too. And I have learned inks, Dan, are are not, it's not the line you put down, it's it's the choices that you make. And it's what I love about your work, among many other things. Thank you. Wow, it's, that's the best introduction I think I've ever had. <laughs> Thanks, wow, uh, thank you. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan and I, I remember, um, you know, when I first saw your work, I was I, I was just blown away. I'm a huge Frazetta fan, and you know, not too many people really like embrace shadows the way you do on on your work. And I, that's something I'm still trying to implement into my work. I I have a real I don't know fear or phobia, but you know, right from the get go, you were like laying stuff down like like a like an old master. So I remember the top cap, cow stuff. And I was everyone was impressed. You know, at every at every studio. Everybody was digging it. Uh, thank you. I, I could not render. I, I All the line work, I tried when I first got in. I couldn't make it work. And so Shadows was... I, I hit a point where I almost wanted to quit, you know? Really? I don't know if I had that kind of point where you just feel like, yeah, I just can't do this. And uh, it was actually looking at Simon Bisley, who <laughs> is... You know, so it wasn't directly for Frazetta. It was Frazetta oh. eventually. But at first it was Simon Bisley, and that was kind of my introduction into Frazetta and... Interesting. Uh, that kind of, you know, shape language. So, yeah. No, it's it's beautiful, like the way you construct. I mean, there's art to constructing pleasing shadows and negative space and, and, and black, on a, especially in a black and white medium, which we primarily work. Um, you know, it's it's difficult. But when, when somebody does it right, you know, like you do, it, it's, it's really impressive. Well, thank you. But we're not here to talk about me. Oh. Also, I want to mention that we have Eric Grove, my co-host. You can see Eric's picture. We're drawing today. This is that has very, very famous self-portrait. So we, I'm going to switch over here. Hold on. There we go. Yeah, you can see a, a printout. This is a, a that's a pencil version, I think. Yeah, that's the pencil version of Frazetta's. Um, he must have done it years later because he yeah. did that portrait pretty early in his career in in, in with paint, with oil paint, and then. Years later, he went through this phase where he was doing these amazing uh, pencil studies and he even put out a portfolio. This was probably just something he was playing around with. He did that in 95, it looks like. Yeah, that was really kind of toward the end of his career. He he did a lot of just incredible uh, tonal stuff, you know. Yeah. I've got books of it, you know. I've yeah, got, I have a whole section. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to switch my camera here and show you what I've got and we'll, uh, we'll get started. So we are starting with, um, let me switch back to, we're, so I, I trace this from the painting. Uh, and I just wanna say, I wanna point out, if I am ever gonna do a likeness, if that ever happens, that's always the way I start. I never um, try to map out the features and make everything work. It is such a difficult thing. And in illustration, it's it's folly to do that. I think, you know, in fine art, there's a place for it, but in illustration, you really want to get the job done and make it as, as accurate as you can. So tracing, eh, sometimes it's not cheating, I think, anyway. Yeah. I don't know well, especially you... in this, I mean, we want it to, 
I, the, the experiment I wanted to try is to take something like a tonal study or even the painting mm -hmm. and see if you can interpret it with, with ink lines, um, something I'm pretty into. Because um, I, I just, I, I really want to shift the way I, I draw quite a bit from, you know, super linear to try to try to emulate just, you know, tones and solid blacks and, and light. And, and that's always what I'm trying to think of when I'm drawing. Yeah, it, I've, I've been trying to think more in those terms lately. I, I'm a huge fan of Mike Mignola. And I don't know if this is true, but I heard that he would photocopy uh, photographs. Not for everything. I mean, obviously he had the ability to draw everything from mm -hmm. his head. But he would just as an exercise um, photocopy photographs and just really increase the contrast so you'd have just black and white. Oh, I didn't know that. It's cool. But it certainly, it certainly makes sense. Here, I'm trying. I don't know if we're supposed to start yet, but... Uh, You're working on a light box. I'm working on a light box right now, which uh, is not how any artist, I guess, would probably prefer to work. But um, it saves time, and now I've gotten kind of used to it. And I would have done what, what you guys are doing, um, which is the preferred... You know, trace this thing off properly and and do it that way. Oops. Dave Johnson, let me shut that off. Um, but uh, um, but now I'm kind of used to this way. It's it's really an illustration technique too. Uh, is that something that you you kind of picked up from working illustra in illustration? Well, uh, I mean, working with a light box no i mean that's that's just um i guess years of of comic booking um you know because i did I, you know like started out primarily as an anchor and a lot of times you you get stuff in or sometimes you get you know pencils eventually sent to you you know and they wouldn't be blue lined and you have to print them out it was just easier that way yeah yeah now i don't have a light box but what i do have is my computer screen so if you're uh, doing this at home, the way that I did this is I just plopped my paper right up onto the screen, sized it on the screen to the size I needed, and it did my trace out that way. Wow, it's, really? That's pretty yeah. crazy. It's I actually do all my Walking Dead covers I do that way. I do little thumbnail layouts, but I do them pretty tight. Mm -hmm. um, and I just trace them out and go from there. And usually I don't have to change things too much. Wow, that's pretty incredible. It works. Yeah, look, I mean, those those covers came out fantastic. I, I'm constantly amazed by them. It's, I'll tell you what, it, it's so much easier than, I used to do uh, little thumbnail layouts, and then I would just recreate it on the page, um, just straight up. And it's fine to do that. Uh, it, it's just a hassle, you know. So it's a, it's a real time saver to not have to redraw everything. Hmm. Right now, I am blocking in. Um, I'm really impressed with all with with both of you how you're really getting into the painting, and that's a whole different you know animal, basically. Uh, you know, just for me, the transition to penciling was a, was a was kind of a big deal. I, I always thought, like I've kind of mentioned this before in other podcasts, but just um, by by inking someone, and I've even inked you. I, I inked you uh, on, a, on a Disney job a long time ago. I you remember know, for yeah. engineering. Yeah, and I always thought, like by osmosis, I would, you know, by by virtue of like inking over someone like you, I might learn some stuff. But it, it, you really kind of have to, um, you know, you have to do it. There's, there's no other. You can't you can't be an armchair artist and, and theorize about it. You have to. You know, you have to do it. So it took me a while to figure that out. I, I would think that you could pick up quite a bit, but definitely, I, I, it, yeah, you have to uh, sit and work with the proportions and, you know, solve the problems. Because there are so many visual problems that, that don't come up when you're inking. It's it's a whole other set of problems. And so, you know, not to minimize it at all, because it's it's such sure, a it's definitely an art. craft. Um, but. Yeah. So you, you didn't start out as an inker when you when you broke in but uh in the, the early 90s you you really were mostly inking yeah um I, it was what I, I did much better 
um, than, than drawing. And I wasn't quite ready for, um, for Marvel. And that, you know, I, 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 I lucked out thanks to um, Walt Simonson kind of helped me get into Marvel really, really quickly. But, um, and, and Marvel would give me um, work here and there, but it was mostly, mostly inking. It was mostly just a nice way of, you know, trying to help me, um, I guess, um, you know, keep me, keep me happy. They're, they're very kind that way. Yeah, they were always so good to me. I, you know, you hear stories here and there that, you know, people are unsatisfied and I'm sure that can happen, but. Yeah, it's also, it's also depends on, uh, on the editor too, I think a great deal. But yeah, my experience, they always worked with, and DC too, you know, a lot of good things. Oh yeah, DC is fantastic. I mean, great people. So before we go on, I want to mention that Dan has a book up on uh, Zoop. Yes. Yeah, it, it, we finished the book, but um, what's nice about Zoop is they're, they're letting it kind of reopen, which is kind of cool, um, just, just for this. Yeah, which is, I, well, we had talked about do, doing this uh, just about a month ago, and we weren't able to do it, so I'm so glad that we could, uh, you know, fit this in and you were able to, to open up um, the book again for orders. So I'm going to quickly put it up on the screen. Um, okay. Hold on. I'm, this is always so awkward when I do this. Yes, well, it's, I mean... We do this with a uh, drink and draw, and I'm always like, how it, it's so difficult to run the stream and um, you know all, all this stuff all at once. So here it is. This is the Dan Panosian Urban Barbarian Collected Works, and I just is it up on the screen? Yeah, I see it there. Oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so it's uh, it's a 116 page hardcover with oops, covers, character designs, sequential pages, and uh, just a ton of beautiful work. I know we showed this just about a month ago on uh, on another stream, but yeah, I saw that. Thank you. Thanks again for that. My pleasure. It's such an incredible book. I mean, look at the artwork. That's some of that that tonal stuff. Is that pencil? Is that yeah? That's that that would be pencil. Um, but there's there's ink in that too. Like yeah, um, yeah that kind of media is always you just get a. a texture and kind of a you know a prettiness to it that you can't get just with one medium yeah no i was looking at some of the greg smallwood that's that's a good guy you should probably get on the show um just seeing his um his techniques he has some really interesting um techniques with pencil or it might even be digital pencil he's using but whatever it is um the way he mixes the ink lines and everything yeah. is really cool very very good I, you know, of all the pictures here, and it shouldn't be the one that I, I love the best, but the shining picture, and I think it's because it's something that I don't do well at all. Like, it's a real struggle for me. And to see that kind of juxtaposed with the picture beside it, with the, the woman with the, you know, the blade. Oh, thanks. That kind of range is just amazing. It's such beautifully composed stuff. Everything really oh, nice. So yeah, the book is absolutely full of really amazing work and it is available for a very short time uh, today and tomorrow, I think is, is it. So yeah, I think they're putting it up for an extra or maybe even over the weekend. I'm not sure. I'll have to check, but um, it, it was nice of them to uh, continue it. Yes, absolutely. So uh, now I'm trying to get that for Zeta smirk that he kind of has. So what a, handsome, what a handsome guy too. He always uses himself as oh yeah you <laughs> as reference and it's pretty cool. Yeah, you know he says I never use reference and uh -huh. uh, say that. But look at his, his stuff and every single picture looks like him. Exactly. Uh, we're yeah. right. Now, I'm using uh, this is my regular usual brush pen. This is a pen pal. I think it's anyway. And I am trying this on Amazon. I don't know if maybe before, so it's so hard to know say exactly what it is, but you can find these on Amazon. If you look at Pencil Brush Pen, you can order that one. And Dan, uh, for your uh, brush, you were using a Pencil Brush Pen. Uh, Dave, your, Dave, your sound is going out a bit there. Yeah, you're breaking up a little bit, Dave. Oh, no. Now, now you're back. Now you're back. 
Hopefully it doesn't happen again. Yeah. Yeah. He just keeps fading in and out of it. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I'm not talking into my microphone enough. No. There we go. That's better. No, it's perfect. Okay, good. Um, so yeah, uh, we're all we all started with a brush pen. I'm gonna finish out the hair. You've already got that. You uh, look at this. It is. I'm I'm cooking on this stuff. Uh, yeah, we're <laughs> not keeping up at all. <laughs> I'm gonna have to just stop talking and start drawing. Yeah, I always have a hard time. I, we have guests on the Drink and Draw show, and if if we don't have um, someone like Ben helping out, you know, it's it's a bit of a <laughs> it's not easy. So I don't envy what you. I don't. I don't usually get to do what you're doing right now. <laughs> Joe Donnelly the third says, "I don't use reference in quotes," and says, "Literally runs down a hillside to demonstrate an attack and fire and ice." He is reference. <laughs> That's true. I forgot yeah. about that. You know, I guess uh, some of the greatest geniuses they don't have to reveal all their tricks. I think even yeah. for Johnny Comet, he, he did, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Like all those guys did. I mean, they had well, you know, Williamson was posing a lot in there, and um, you know, they they all kind of helped each other out. What a great great studio! Yeah, well, and unlike uh, you know all of us nowadays, they were all in pretty good shape back in the fifties. Yeah. So. Yeah, somehow, yeah, somehow they remained in great shape. Yeah, yeah. Frazetta had a good uh, had a good uh, physique to uh, model, you know, to model. So he had to be working out. I mean, that's you don't oh, just yeah. that yeah. way. So what really led to the the style change that you you went through, you know, especially really, you know, recently with with your work from the work that you were doing, you know, in the 90s, more of the the image style to something that's much more illustrative and uh, just really rounded? Well, I mean, I, I really. Uh, for me, I, I just I, I wanted to do what I'm doing currently right now, which is I wanted to do everything. I was always impressed with, with guys like Simonson and, you know, John Byrne and Frank Miller and uh, Joe Kubert, and John Buscema, the way they, they'd handle every aspect of comic book making. And I, I just didn't have the, uh, the chops. And I, I kind of got out of comics for a little bit. Um, and oddly enough, it was that, it was that time uh, that kind of helped me learn. Like you, I was kind of trial by fire. I was doing storyboards and it, it, there's not, a, it, with storyboards, um, for those people who don't know that a lot of times they're not very finished looking. All you're trying to do is, is get the, um, the idea across so a cameraman can come back in there and, um, and, and kind of get an idea or the director can set up a shot properly. So doing a finished um, look like we do in comic books isn't necessarily, um, Ah, you use reference. That must so, be uh, yeah. So yeah. Frazetta Girls is here. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, thank you so much for coming. Yeah, I tweeted on there that we were going to be doing this because I'm a huge, uh, huge fan. Awesome. Um, yeah, they're, they're great. And they're launching a whole bunch of new. Did you do one of those covers, uh, David? I, uh, sort of. I, I did a, a sketch. Um, several years ago and uh richard friend inked it and and we use it that way unfortunately i'm under contract right now so i can't do much um, oh yeah i get it so i would have loved to have been able to do more and you know hopefully uh some point fairly soon i'll be yeah that able. piece came out really really good dave uh rich posted it to his instagram it looks great yeah he's 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 very good he's so <laughs> who inked you at um when you were at um top cow I started out with Aaron Sode. I don't know if you're familiar. Yeah, I know him. Yeah. 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 And uh, then I um, was working with uh, Jason Gorder for a little bit. Uh, and then from there, Joe Weems, who I, I really was coveting Joe Weems's inks for a little while. He, he's got a really gritty style. He was working with uh, Anthony Wynn at the yeah, time. Yeah, I understand he doesn't, he doesn't really ink. He weems a page. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, <laughs> Totally true. Yeah. yeah. Character. And, uh, he's, you know, he's great. So. Yeah. No, what a terrific talent he is. My yeah. God. And so much of my early style is, is really based on what I learned from him, you know? Uh, and then from there, uh, I worked with, uh, with Bat a little bit, who is. Oh lovely. yeah. He's great too. Another yeah. great one. Anchor. Uh, and uh, over at Marvel, I, I started working with Danny Mickey, which, you know. Yeah, you uh, can't go wrong there. 
No. And again, it was like a huge style evolution for me, just the work he was doing, you know. So here I'm trying to uh, mimic maybe some of the, the lines Frank did, which, you know, not, not that easy, but you're always, I'm always trying to think of form and shape. And so the feathering um, of course is always trying to mirror that to some degree. Um, and the trick of course, is to make all these, you know, linear lines represent, tone and uh not always that easy yeah uh, some painters and i mean frazetta certainly is is one of them have such a great sense of of direction with their brush strokes it makes it yeah kind of you know it makes some of those choices a little easier if you're trying to translate it mm -hmm. um, i've certainly it, it's funny we're doing this i never would have this was by the way everyone this was dan's idea i thought it was such a great idea to do this uh and i've done this so many times really uh copying oh, yeah? stuff and then you know having to look at the lighting that he does on anatomy and trying to find a way to make that work in black and white so. <laughs> yeah um well i am trying to make this look somewhat painterly and still look like he did it well i'm not going to try to even for a second try to um um make it look like Frank Frank's inking. He not only was he a great painter, but he's a tremendous anchor as well. Uh, oh yeah, peerless. I mean, I guess it, there are, there are other anchors that that could ink a, a line as smoothly and prettily. Um, yeah, but not many. No, not many. No. Uh, here, let's see. I'm coming here. I'll turn the light box off so we can kind of see what's happening. Oh, wow. Look at that. Okay. Eric, we should. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I think I'm losing a connection here, Dave. I, uh, yeah. Wow. I'm going into a tunnel. That looks absolutely amazing. The The pen that you're using right now, what's that called? This is a Kurotaki PK2-10. Um, and uh, I like it. I mean, it's, it's just, it's flexible enough. It reminds me of uh, inking with a nib, um, which is how I really kind of started. Um, so it's the closest Fantastic. thing I've found to that. We have, uh, we have Kenneth Rockford here. Oh, he's awesome too. Jesus. Yeah, absolutely incredible. I mean, I'm assuming everyone that's watching this right now is familiar with Kenneth's work. He's absolutely incredible. Uh, such a great, uh, artist with you know black and white and also watercolor. So yeah, thank you so much for coming by. Um, I'm going to quickly uh, two things. First of all, let me show you guys where where we are. Okay. Uh, and why we're saying wow, we should just. Yeah. <laughs> this is what I've got so far. I'm I'm going more black and white, and I will with this side of his face also. Uh -huh. just, just, are you going to put in the shadows and everything? And I am. And they'll be a little bit on this side. They're going to be a little bit more dark because I just don't have the ability to get. Yeah, what I you're... can't. Uh, I, I can't fathom how Dan's done I, that already. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. Uh, yeah, you know, it's it's a whole thing for me. So I think I'm going to cheat a little bit and just go dark here, and then try more to copy what you're doing on the other side because I, I really, am, one of the big appeals for me doing this was uh, to try and do what you're doing. Oh. Well, I, I appreciate that. I'm gonna. I, I watch your show all the time, and what I'm really impressed with is, um, and it, it's terrifying for me is is painting. It's, but I really want to eventually try that. But um, man, thinking in those terms, even when I color a cover, um, it is, you know, it's it's more of a challenge. It takes me longer to color it than it, than it does to draw it. Um, so, yeah. watching someone like you um, em embrace the painting and really get into it. Man, it's, it's it's super inspiring. Well, thank you very much. We also have we have Mike Zek here. So oh, thank are you me. kidding me? Yeah, yeah. Mike, yeah. Right now. We we had uh, Mike Zek here. This would have been six months ago or so, and I couldn't believe it. It was it was great. So it's great to see wow. you again here. Uh, you know, we're getting more people here with with you here. <laughs> than, oh, well, I, I doubt it's for that, but. Um, you know what, what was a funny uh, Mike Zek story is um, Mike 
um, at one point, um, I, I don't, I don't really know him that well. I'd see him at, at shows in Florida and he, he had a copy of all the, um, pencils from Punisher number one. He gave me the entire, uh, stack of pencils. And so I used those to, to learn how to ink. And those were my samples that I used to get into Marvel and you know, wow. talk about it. I mean, John Beatty was, was inking that stuff masterfully. And I'm just, you know, trying my best to kind of emulate that, but you know, like anything, like you see John Beatty's super slick inks. And then I looked at, you know, I wasn't familiar with anybody's pencils, you know, that well. And here I had an entire 22 page book of Mike Zeck stuff. And there's, there's like a grittiness and a rawness to the the pencils that, you know, like if someone like Klaus Janssen had inked it, it, it'd have a whole different um, look to it, you know, and it's just, it was just interesting to see like, Oh, that's, that's what, that's what, that's how John Beatty saw this. And, you know, um, this is, I wonder what it would look like if Mike was thinking himself. And, you know, it was very interesting. And I was, I was still so young and, and new to it, but it was, it was such an honor to even have something like that. So I'm really grateful to him. Oh, it's amazing the, the difference for a young artist, uh, an older artist that's, that's supportive like that can make. You know? Yeah. It's, it's such a small thing, but it, it makes such a big difference. It's Huge. really Yeah, that made a very big difference with me. Um, I, yeah, it was funny as I, I was thinking about those um, those pages earlier today. I was like, I, I, I still have them somewhere. I'd love to I'd love to find them, take a look at them. Yeah, yeah. Well, I remember now I started at Top Cow, so it was a studio environment. And I, I know I've said this before. I honestly I thought I was the best artist on the face of the earth when I was on the plane down. <laughs> yeah. And then I walked in the studio and you just, you walk by actual work from, you know, people that really know what they're doing. And, oh, it was so humbling. It was unbelievable. But it was such a growth period just being exposed to that. I'm sure. And then you had, you know, you, you're there with someone like Silvestri. And uh, I remember I, I got to ink uh, Mark briefly. And man, what uh, those pencils are also just amazing pencils. And to, by today's standards, you know, someone like Mike Stex. Punisher pencils or, or Marcel Ventry, any pen, you know, pencils, you would just shoot those as is. You literally wouldn't need an anchor thanks to all the, you know, great technology we have now. Yeah, you know, that, well, there was a period where this is how kind of people were starting to switch to working and you don't see it much now because uh, it seems like digital links have really kind of taken over more. Mm -hmm. um, I tried doing shooting my pencils and I'm tight, but I'm also really heavy handed really? with all of my, uh, my perspective. I have it all over the page and it's heavy. It just it makes such a mess. It never will. Oh, wow. Well, I'd love, I'm sure you're being hard on yourself. I'd love to see that. Um, yeah, I, I hated that stuff. I don't no. know. <laughs> well, that's why you're so, that's why you're so good. I mean, you're, you're your own. I think that's what you have to be in this business. You have to be your own, critic you know you have to you know love it and you want to always strive to get better uh, yeah, absolutely it's it's a job where i i think you can you can do pretty well if you're very talented you can make a career of it just um as a journeyman if you choose you know but to really uh make it a yeah. might try to think here <laughs> you all right here i'm going to do a huge marker Oh no! Okay. Oh, we'll man. See, this could this could be great, or it could destroy the whole thing. Uh, it's all right. Yeah, I, it's working already. I can see it. All right, we can see. But what's nice is you can see how Frank. Let's see. Let's shut this off for a second. Um, and you can see how um, he's he's taken part of the shirt, and he's he's brought it into the uh, darkness. So I'm going to try to do that but again it's, it's easier with pencil and certainly easier with paint um but let me try to explore that the story that i heard or that i read i think it's actually in in his book uh, is that he came home he was really angry about something and uh he looked in the mirror and he just had you know a furious kind of a you know passionate look on his face and he just sat down and whipped this out and it looks like <laughs> you know i like hearing stuff like that you yeah. seem like kind of a passionate guy. So yeah, John, I mean, John Beatty is here as well. Uh, oh, John Beatty. Wow. They're all coming out. 
All the rock stars are here. John Beatty's been penciling a lot of stuff and doing all these amazing commissions. And like, if you go to cons, he'll do, um, you know, like the uh, blank covers and, um, man, uh, what a, what a talented guy he is. Yes. So apparently, uh, um, the Mike Zek that we have here, because John Beatty is talking to Mike Zek right now, uh, oh. someone different. Oh, it's a different Mike Zek. Well, regardless, for a second there, I was, I was <laughs> thrilled. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I think that's all I can do with the <laughs> ink. So I'm going to go in with um, a pencil that. now. Okay, don't do it yet. Oh, stop for a second. And I want to quickly put up on the screen again. And let me go to my share thing and go through the whole thing here. Uh, Wow. Okay. So uh, I also have this. We have um, Dan's uh, Dan's art book up in the description. You can find it. It's also in the chat. But we also uh, have a link for Unbreakable Red Sonia number one uh, yeah. that's coming up very soon. And um, we both did a cover for it. So here is here is Dan's cover. Which I mean, look at that absolutely amazing it's a beautiful cover is that ink wash? yeah that's all ink wash and that was that was done originally on the um drink and draw social club just for for fun so you did that live yeah we did that live and uh i might have come back in later with the uh ink wash but uh, you know because it's it's like your show we, we try to keep it around an hour yeah yeah so yeah it's a beautiful cover now mine it's, yours. It, it, it's a little quicker unfortunately yeah. This was actually done on uh, on a book um, as a as a bit of a oh question. so they took they took the actual sketch cover and made it into a cover yes very so, cool and uh, also some other incredible covers that is a beautiful cover and I think so, that Perillo is that right let me make sure Lucio Perillo I'm so sorry Lucio Perillo uh, yeah some really beautiful covers I love this one oh, that's cool yeah so oh and. That's nice. Yeah. I like that. See, that's that's some beautiful color in there. Uh like the hair and that that uh over the shoulder, whatever that is over the shoulder. Um with, with the way that yellow is kind of coming into the the blues and yep. yeah, you get the contrast between the warms and the cools. And the yeah. blue just really is all over the figure. That's something actually in the Frazetta picture in the original painting that oh, yeah. beautifully you can see blue all through there and it just gives it a really atmospheric look. Yeah, I keep trying to do that with my colors. I just I just did a uh, Lord of the Jungle cover for um, for Dynamite today, or um, Dynamite is it Dynamite. It's Dynamite. Dynamic is the right. Yeah, other right. other other business. But yeah, I, I, you know, I'm always trying to implement aspects of Frazetta in, in actual real painting when I'm trying to color, and you know sometimes it sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Oh, I see. Oh, now you're putting the blacks in on the side there. Yeah, as, as much as I can. And then I'll put some rendering in from there. I just find I struggle mightily if if I don't um, have a, a an actual black to render from. It's just mm -hmm. a real for me. And it's just the way that I learned years ago. So it works, but then there are times that it kind of fights me. Oh, well, it's, it's working today. Well, thank you. All right. Let me, uh, so you're going to pencils. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna try to um, do a little bit here and just graphite it up a little bit. Um, we'll see if it actually works. I did one today for a friend of mine. Um, I'll turn this off again. And I did a Martin Scorsese uh, illustration where I kind of married the two. Um, Eric, stop drawing, look up. I, I did some graphite with um, with some black for a friend of mine, Ben DeFeo. That's <laughs> that's amazing. Here. Wow. That is so awesome. That's amazing. And that, you know, it, just the way that you've got the, the shadows, it's not fully dark. Yeah, no, I, that's what's kind of cool. There it is. Now it's in better focus. Um, but yeah, that's, to me, that's a lot of fun and it, learning that tonal stuff really kind of helped me with drawing. Um, and I started doing a lot of life drawing sessions. I, I started off with um, Jeff Watts in San Diego 
and not, not too many of them, but it opened my eyes to, to that world. And mm -hmm. I continue to do it here in Los Angeles. There's a lot of live uh, drawing sessions where models like the gallery girls will put on these um, events weekly. There's sometimes twice a week you, here in LA you can go to. And I, I don't take advantage of it enough, but man, it's, it's like cross training in a sport, you know, like you'll, you'll wonder like, well, why is this guy, you know, doing this sport? And it, it just different muscles, uh, you know, help you in different ways. And um, I, I think the same goes for drawing, which, you know, to go back to you doing a lot of the painting, you know, I'm sure that's, that's in, influenced your drawing to a great deal. Right. Uh, yeah, no, I, unfortunately, I, I've never really had the opportunity to to do life drawing. I, I'm such a huge fan of uh, Jeff Watts's studio. Uh, we had uh, Eric Gist on here. Uh, yeah, I saw that. I saw that episode. It was, it was awesome to listen to him. Yeah, I think I was probably there around the time that, you know, he was. Um, but, you know, clearly he's a much better student of the, of the game than I was. But, uh, He's very, very cool to see his 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 work and yeah. the painting and um, yeah, Jeff is Jeff is a great uh, talent as far as um, shaping people and um, I learned so much just being there just a limited time. I'm finding he, his lighting is so subtle in trying to turn it into black and white the way that I am. And this is, this is where I start talking about the, you know, the drawbacks. I'm, I'm having to make a few choices here, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Well, I knew it would be an interesting experiment. I didn't know um, how, how good it would be, you know, how, how it would turn out, but it's, it's fun to challenge yourself. Even, you know, even if it doesn't turn out the way you want, it's still, you know, you still learn something and, you know, I'm learning that uh, more respect for Frazetta. Or <laughs> copy the stuff. You, you realize that there's just there's just a level of talent that's you know this above. Uh, yeah, he's, he's a generational talent. You know? Yeah, and he's such a natural at it. You know, he just didn't. Uh, you know, he's he's very. Whoops! There we go. Did you hear that? That was a pencil lead breaking. Oh. <laughs> um, and you know you're in it when that happens. Yeah. So we have a super chat from Tagamo Model Works. Thank you so much, Tagamo. It's good to see you here. He says, thanks for being here, Dan. I'm a big fan of Drink and Draw. Uh, to prove it, I'll just say Coca-Cola Coca and baby oil. Enough said. <laughs> yeah, hilarious. All right. So uh, I'm, I'm breaking out my... I, I'm just going to show you guys really quickly. All right. So I, I've got, and when we started, I, I searched around. So I've got the same pen. So I'm going to try and sure. use the pen that you're using. So I'm going to go for it now and start to try to turn some of that into, into rendering. All right. Now we're going to see the, the magic. The uh... Oh, no. We're going back to yours. Oh. <laughs> this is all about you. I, I get to fail with nobody watching. Darn it. Oh, I thought I had a second there. Now, do you post these afterwards? And uh, for the most part, yes. I will admit that I've I've had some where I'm like, oh man, it just didn't work, and so I didn't. But this one, I can already tell. I, I think it's it's going to work all right. Good. Okay, let's see it. So I'm trying to. Come back in with a little bit of eraser now. So it's just creating a, like a half tone. Well, it wouldn't be a half tone; it'd be a, a lighter tone, but a bit of a mid tone that you can create highlights from. Yeah. Ah, oh, you know, I promised myself that I would not just take over and do this my because I really I love the way that you do this stuff and I wanted to try it and here I am doing my same old. You know what, Eric? We need to uh, come back and review this now that we're watching. I, I'd actually really like to um, try this on our own, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're sitting. We're sitting at the feet of the master here, trying to please try to figure out what's going on. And for yeah. those of you guys that are watching, hopefully you're you're drawing along, and uh, I think you'll find it's it's very very difficult to draw along and. 
uh, pick up everything at the same time. So uh, I definitely recommend you. Uh, I might come back to come back to this too. And uh, after we're done and, you know, what's nice about this pencil is I can erase all of it, you know, um, and really get it to a point where it'll, it'll look the way it should. Well, uh, speaking about uh, painting, Dan, you need to join us for a painting stream. Oh God. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think, I think you'll do just fine based on, you know. Oh yeah. Well, I learned, I learned quite a bit watching um, the last one you guys did um, with Eric and I, I still want to get to see the, um, the, the entirety of the Andrew Robinson one, you know, yeah, I think what you guys are doing is, a, is really, you know, it's, it's, it's awesome because now we're, you know, people get to see this stuff and you, you know, we didn't have this, you know, when, when we started. Oh yeah. Nothing, nothing like this was available. And the yeah. most you could do is unless you knew an artist or were fortunate enough to work in a studio is, is just try and guess at the tools people use. Mm -hmm. And some of the yeah. techniques. So. Yeah, I mean, look. Uh, obviously, painting. You know, to get the muscle memory. That that's that's one thing. But I mean, you, you. It's evident you have you know, amazing knowledge of light and shadow and form, and that's that's most of it, really. Yep. Extreme maybe says just finger, no blending stump. Um, this is um, this is just a little. I'm I'm coming back in with my finger and 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 doing that too. Um. But I'm trying. I'm trying to. I'm basically cheating here, um, by like kind of rendering with the eraser at this point. It's hard to see, but uh, wow. Um, but yeah, trying to match what he did perfectly with you know with just a pencil. Not to not to mention, um, you know, we painted this thing first, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, and he ended up having to match his own work with a with a pencil. I, you know. That's true. I yeah, he can kind of get away with it a little bit more once you know yeah. if it's your own painting. And he didn't really seem to struggle as much. So <laughs> no, he, you are. I don't think he struggled that much. If he did, he was smart enough not to tell anybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm finding uh, this pen that I'm using right now is really similar to the one that I normally use. Uh, normally I use a, a Tombow uh, hard tip. It's softer than what I normally use. I, I have really bad hand control. So I, I find a, a soft or a harder tip is kind of easier for me, but huh. this is it's, it's funny hearing that. Cause you know, when I, and I got to see your pencils firsthand when I inked you a long, long time ago, and it just seems like so, you know, like masterful. It's weird. Okay. it's weird to hear you say that. Thank you. Did you notice how hard I pressed though? Yeah, <laughs> I did. Oh. Um, did you ever get those originals back? No. Oh, I wonder what they did with them. I, um, I, I, they were great. Really. You know, they couldn't have been better. Other deadlines hit for me and I kind of went a little incommunicado and then I felt really guilty about that. And, and so uh, I blew my relationship with them. Really. Um, you know? I, don't, I don't think I worked with them that, that longer after that. Um, I, the reason, the reason you came in is um, I was attempting to pick up where Travis left off and you can just imagine how that went. So, um, <laughs> you know, so they were like, okay, we got it. We got to get a heavyweight in here. And they brought you in. And, uh, uh, and I, I ink that stuff. Yeah, nobody could replace Travis, unfortunately. Like you know, you could try something different, but it's just not possible to match that. Yeah, no, he did a great, great job. But I, I, I thought yours was really pretty, pretty super. I, I saw the thing in, in person, by the way. Um, I, I went to. Um, did you did you ever get to go to Disney Quest in Orlando and see it? No, I never did. I, as a matter of fact, I was so embarrassed about the fact that I, you know, I disappeared on the job that I, I just never followed up. Oh God. <laughs> I didn't know that. Well, I apparently no hard feelings. I never heard any, uh, you know, anything bad. Ah, they're pros. They wouldn't say too much. You know, oh. I'm sure they were thinking well, this guy free, but yeah, they're, they were pro. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just, uh,
So I, I will say with um, uh, storyboards, you're saying it's it's much looser and it's you oh, don't yeah, have the same kind of detail. But what you do have to have is is a really great command of of co composition that's very very clear and concise and and just good clear drawing. It's it's actually in some ways because you you have to do it quickly. It's kind of more demanding, I think. Maybe I mean you definitely have to make make um make choices you know quickly and and that's that's what gave me the confidence to go back to doing um comics i was like well if i could do this if i you know i'm doing 30 panels a, a day doing that what what if i spent time on just like you know six panels so it kind of really kind of helped me to um you know have the confidence to, to do comics and get back into it Dave Johnson saw some of my my work. I didn't. I wasn't really friends with him. Uh, we we knew each other, but uh, we weren't great pals. But he, he somehow he got my number, called me up, and and uh, it was kind of like a left handed compliment. He was he was like, uh, you know, I never liked your work on on profit, but if you if I, I saw this thing in muscle and fitness, if you did your work like that, I I totally pick up your comic. And um, so I left I left the. Um, conversation with Dave Johnson would buy a comic if I if I did it you know so yeah well you know it's it's so easy to take offense and not take the the great advice you know no, no it was great I, I I luckily I had the right mindset for it I guess well you have to and I think it makes all the difference because you, you know you're going to get criticism uh, working yeah. any kind of a you know you put your work out there it's it's going to happen so you can kind of credit Dave Johnson a little bit. I did not know that. Oh, yeah. No, he's definitely, uh, you know, we still, he and I still work very closely together. If um, we'll send each other, you know, our layouts, we'll send, you know, almost every stage of the the, the game, we're, we're working with each other. Um, you know, it's been not, not always, not for every, every, every single job, but, you know, when we, when we can, we're, we're trying to bounce the ideas off each other and, and, and stuff like that. Yeah, it's it's really nice to have that. I, I Sounds have that like you guys have that. Is, that. is that how you guys work together? Oh, yeah, absolutely. All the time. Like we uh, we draw together and, and uh, paint together all the time off the stream. And a lot of times when we do a painting stream, we've, we've already kind of game planned it a little bit just on our own, which is kind of nice, you know, to not we fail on the street because we've both had some complete failures uh so well it's very daring to even attempt it i mean it is it is hard to paint uh it, it terrifies me and um you guys doing that stuff kind of gives me the confidence like oh that's okay I, I can try it i can see and you know you have to you have to fail sometimes to to improve you know i think yeah i think that's true and and just I find just being willing to fail live because it's it happens. I mean, it certainly happened. I think to both Eric and I, we've had pictures that just didn't work, you know. And uh, our audience is very forgiving, so <laughs> we're fortunate that way. You're very uh, humble, but uh, yeah, no, I'd, I'd be I'd be thrilled with any of those paintings that I've seen. Well, thank you. I, I at some point need to show you some of the ones that <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, do that so I can have I can have a little bit more confidence. That'd be nice. Yeah, there are definitely some <clears throat> definitely Masa that are turned into glorified frisbees, that's for sure. <laughs> Glor I like that. I'm gonna steal uh, that. This yeah I would almost say there's more of those than there's ones that turn out good. Yeah. I think the frequency of the of the bad ones kind of get less the more you go, as with anything. Yeah, that's the idea. And then you look back a few years later and you realize they were all bad. <laughs> so, yeah. so what would give you the uh, impetus to say, okay, I'm gonna, you know, you, you have the, obviously a full time job with with everything you do in, in comics, but you decided, you know, I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna try this as well. Uh, well, COVID hit, you know, and I, I had done a lot of conventions and I really enjoy that interaction um, with fans. I mean, it, it keeps me going. So uh, I kind of wanted to do something 
that would keep that going. And uh, um, I, I did a, an interview for uh, Jimmy Reyes, who has a great YouTube channel. He's uh, an inker and artist, uh, and he comes by sometimes. He's a, he's a good friend, and he pointed out that I had a, a channel with 11,000 subscribers and because I, I had posted some how-to videos years ago and I totally forgot about the channel. So I thought, hey, you know, I've got a head start. I might as well give it a shot. Well, now you seem to, how many how many subscribers now? It seems like quite a bit. Yeah, I think we're, we're at 282,000 right now. Jesus, well, it worked out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, it's it's been going great. I mean, you know, I just it, it's nice to have the platform to um, uh, get my work out there, you know, and also a work of artists that I'm, you know, a huge fan of. So that's been nice, too, because having the opportunity to do this with with you right now is not something I would be able to do otherwise. So it's been great that way. Well, I really appreciate you having me on here. And as, as you can probably tell in a big fan from a long time you know i just always impressed with how you uh kind of you always seem like you kind of paint paint a little bit with a pencil you know so it's, it's pretty cool well thank you very much yeah, we, in so many ways we have a, a similar career and then very different too because <laughs> I, I i really wanted to work in video games and i, I tried it a little bit um I found it really hard, you know. Um, I was doing designs, and I, I went from comics where you do a design and nobody cares. Oh yeah, you know, the, the amount of redos in uh, in the comic, I mean, in the advertising world, it, it'll break most people. Yeah, well, it broke me. Yeah. I yeah. ran back to comics. So, <laughs> um, well, I think I think I got this one. I think it's mostly done. I'll pull, I'll pull an Andrew and uh, possibly come back like in Photoshop and clean it a little bit. But... Are you ever worried about doing that and making it different than the original? Because... It happens all the, all the time with me. I, it, definitely. You know, I, I, I wish the thing could look exactly um you know, like it, like it does, like you were showing again, I, back to that Andrew thing, like um, the difference between that page that you, you must've bought yeah. versus how, how it appears in the book. And we're talking about the fifth beetle. Um, you know, that's a good point. And it doesn't take away from the original. Um, yeah. I love how it looked in the original anyway. So yeah. Cause I, I would always worry that if it doesn't look like the original, it's going to devalue the original art, which is, you know, I mean, it's a big part of our business. Yeah, no, totally. And, uh, no, I worry about that too, you know, cause I want, I want that, you know, you go to these conventions and you see all this, you know, great original art out there. And, uh, and, and I, I, I want my stuff to look like how it, how it appears in print. Um, you know, and that's not always the case after, after you do the digital aspect. Well, it doesn't seem to be suffering much. I mean, the original art that I've seen, and that's the nice thing about uh, going over to to uh, Jason over at Essential Sequential or his booth, and then you know take a look at what everybody else is working on, and uh, the originals look. Uh, I, I personally don't know what you would want to change. Well, there we are. This is the finished. Yeah, that's amazing. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. It looks it looks truly incredible, and yeah, it it has the feel of of the pencils that he did a little bit, but also, uh, you know, the painterly kind of flair of the painting. That's, that's unbelievable. Both are. Thank you guys. I'm gonna try to mimic his awesome signature here. <laughs> Even that has uh, artistic prowess to it. Yeah. It does. And he does it in oil paint. I don't know how he pulls that off. <laughs> yeah. It's not the easiest. No. No, well, that's my bastardized version of it. Let's see. Yeah. Not as powerful as, as Frank's, but that's to be expected. 
Uh, yeah, when he was drawing himself, and I, I think he was in a pretty emotional place. So you know, but I think <laughs> it sounds like he was always pretty emotional, doesn't it? I guess you have to be to be producing yeah. that. You yeah. can't be a mild mannered kind of person, you know. No, it's hard to be a mild mannered artist, isn't it? It is, yeah. And all the all the artists, so you guys all know, <laughs> watching, uh, yeah, all the artists that that seem really nice, we're all terrible people, really. <laughs> <laughs> Especially me. <laughs> All right, uh, let me um, show you where we are with ours here. I, I can see the thumbnail of mine, and it's. I think I might have suffered a little bit for, for the approach that I took. Uh, Ooh, that's pretty cool. It's. Yeah. I love seeing different, you know, the different takes on and how people interpret it. Yeah, you've got, it, you've got a real nice, like that kind of stoic, tough, like don't mess with me um Frazetta which really embodied how that guy actually was yes and at the same time though I, I kind of lost a bit of the likeness I think I don't know I'd still say it's Frazetta I wouldn't want to be Frazetta angry and uh and I love all the tonal stuff there Eric that's pretty damn cool yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be honest I have no idea what I'm doing here you know what you did a great job and yeah, you're a very I mean this is a very very hard thing to to ink I mean, you know, you've, you've seen probably it's more, you know, of uh, David's work. And, you know, it's, it's to ink that stuff is you're inking. It's, that's difficult enough. And that's and all the lines are right there. There's no lines in this. It's just tone. So yeah, yeah. understanding how to interpret that stuff is. It's not yeah, easy. I would say that's the, yeah, the biggest challenge here is the tonality. You know, you look at like black and white ink with some feathering, sure. But, you know, to, to get some of the subtleties in the original. Yeah, if I can, you can still see the. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Let me. Uh, oh, okay. see, I'm trying to see if we can see the ink line. I, I, I can. Just you know, you can see, you know, the brush and the hair. Mm -hmm. um, but what is actually a little difficult to see is is some of the rendering on the darker side of his face. Oh, Nick Brucci says uh, Dan and Nick Brucci's here. By the way, thank oh, you, Nick. Said boy, close to thirty thousand dollars on his Zoop. Uh, give it a look. Oh, that's awesome. Let me uh, hit you guys with that again. Actually, I'm such a moron with this stuff. So, you... oh, here we go. I got it. Okay. Turn it. Trying to get it to focus here. I don't know if I've lost focus, but that that's typical. Well, while you're finding focus, <laughs> let me show you guys again. This Let's is see where we're at. It was nice of uh, Jordan at Zoop to, to reopen the campaign. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's at $29,272. Very, very close to $30,000. And it is from an initial goal of $10,000. So it's oh, triple wow. that goal right now. Right. Uh, and hopefully we can get it as high as we can possibly get it. Uh, and I'm sure with all of you guys watching. Uh, yeah. And Jordan's going to keep it up and open over the weekend. So if anybody's interested, um, there's a lot of work like this where there's a lot of experimentation and, um, you know, try, trying new things and a lot of process work, which, you know, if you enjoy uh, David's channel where you get to see this stuff kind of come together, um, you know, I like to show the pencils, the inks and how it all, all breaks down. To me, that always fascinated me as a young artist. Um, you know, every now and then Marvel or DC would put that sort of thing together. Yeah, it was such a rarity, you know. Yeah, it was a real rarity, but when it when you see it, you really cherish it, and you know, and, it always it always helped a great deal. Yes, and frankly, it it, it still is a rarity uh, to see from some of the best artists out there. You can find it, but you know, to find um, find process of of your work, or you know. Um, well, we had Andrew Robinson on, who is such a genius. It's, you know, mm -hmm. there's no other place you can find that kind of thing. So it's it's like gold to have. And not only that, it's just a beautiful book. That What character is that? Um, that is uh, Donnie Cates' crossover. And the other one is um, Scott Snyder and uh, Greg Capullo's character from, uh, um, God, what is the name of that book? Um, um, uh, I just bought it. Today, too. it oh, we have demons. Well, that's right. I just bought the trade paperback. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's a great book. 
Yeah, I haven't read it yet. I, well, I just got it. Yeah, so a beautiful book. Uh, please, everyone, go in and check it out. The link oh. is in the description. It's also in the chat. And oh, I just I just refreshed the page. Yeah, oh, yeah. Nick was, um, Nick was suggesting you refresh again, Dave. It looks like it's jumped. Yeah, up. it looks like it's it's up there. It, it, it's, it is close to yeah. thirty. It's great. Cool. Yeah, it's only a uh, hundred and seventy bucks away. It's going to make it no problem. Excellent. So it's, it's great to see. So yeah, uh, Dan obviously, as you guys can all see, is a great guy and a genius artist and. Um, so I'm I'm very excited to be able to show you guys his his book and have him on uh, drawing with us. Also, uh, we have Unbreakable Red Sonia, uh, number one, and you can find that. There's a link to this in the description. Also, oh cool, written I'm by doing covers. I'm doing covers for all four of those. Oh great, yeah. For me, unfortunately, it's only the the Just first one. one. Um, it written by Jim Sub, who is a great writer um, and a really nice guy. I don't know if you've ever had a chance to meet him, but oh yeah, no, he's he's and he loves um, all things Robert E. Howard. So it's, yes, is, you know this is right up his alley. I, I can't wait to read this thing. Yeah, oh, it's a book that I think is really written from the right place. It's yeah. very respectful of of the original source material, and uh, he's he's a really great writer and drawn by Giovanni Valletta who has uh, worked for Marvel and a bunch of other companies and a lot of Dynamite stuff. He's done some really beautiful work. And uh, so I think, yeah, this is going to be an absolutely amazing book. So please check it out. Buy it at your local comic store or go to the link in the description and uh, check it out there. I'm sure you can. Oh, Jason Schachter, where can we find my original artwork? <laughs> There's only one place. It's Essential Sequentials. <laughs> <laughs> and Jason loves to haggle. So uh, haggle with that man. All prices are negotiable. Yeah, oh yeah, for me too. <laughs> That's right. And he's always running sales too. He, he likes to, um, you know, I think right now, I don't know who it is. Um, I think one of his guys is running a sale. I'm not sure right now, but yeah, he always does. And he's got uh, Christmas sales every year. So I'm sure we'll both be part of that one too. So Of course, yeah. And right. also, you, you, I take it you're going to be at the New York Comic Con. Yeah, I'll be there. Yeah, I'll be there too. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll see you there. Actually, I'm I'm sure I'll see you there. We're yeah. basically in the same area of the show. Totally. So, all right. Well, thank you so much for coming on and and uh, doing this with us. Uh, it was I had a blast. Thanks, David. It's great to you know. It's probably the longest conversation you and I ever. Uh oh. Now is definitely the time for me to go before Eric like tears me a new one. <laughs> Good to see you, Eric. Thank you so much for coming by. Uh, <laughs> we had Eric Kennedy earlier this summer, and we did a, a stream on um, uh, dynamic figures and really, you know, pushing the proportions and and such a great stream. It was. How much did Eric? How much did Eric pay you to be on the show? <laughs> uh, you know, I would have paid Eric. <laughs> no money changed hands, but I would have totally paid for that one. It was great. <laughs> All right. Thank you everyone so much for coming and uh, and watching the stream. I learned a lot from this one. I'm definitely, especially, I have never inked and then gone back in with pencil as a tonal. And um, I actually, I, I think before I post this, I'm going to give that a try on this one here. And yeah, it's fun. It's it's definitely yeah. fun. It, it makes me feel like I'm on, you know working for Mad Magazine or something. You know. Yeah. It, well, it's it's. I guess you could call it a bit of a throwback style in that sense, but yeah. uh, you know, I think any style that has a lot of character, uh, there's no such thing as a throwback anymore. You know? No, that's, I love the way, you know, the comic book uh, art world is, is going right now there. I mean, there's just so much room for so many. Oh, thanks, Nick. Thanks so much. There's so much room for so many different art styles and, 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 you know, like anything, if you do an, any art style, whether it's, you know, super, super cartoony or, you know, realistic like Alex Ross, depending on, um, you know, the execution, it's it's timeless. It, re it really is. And um, now now is a great time to be in comics, a great time to be in, in, enjoying um, the art that, you know, usually was just it, it, it was all indie work. That's the only way you could find stuff like that now. Now other stuff is crossing over to mainstream and, you know, everybody can enjoy it. 
yeah, there's no dominant style. It feels so much more like European comics, you know, yeah. where there's just so much more room for creativity, which uh, I, I think it seems like the, the format that people are printing is, is going more in that direction too. So mm -hmm. I'm very hopeful that we're going to go through a real renaissance period in the industry. Yeah, I think we are. Well, thanks. Thanks, you guys. Thanks, Eric. Thank you, David. I really appreciate you putting money on this show and the showcase and getting a chance to talk with you guys. Yeah, this is great. Hopefully we can have you on again. We'll definitely. Any, anytime. I'd love to. I'd love to try the painting thing, but uh, uh, we'll see. <laughs> 30,000 broken. Oh, thanks, Nick. Nick bought the last uh, 130, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is awesome. That's a great way to, that's a great way to end. Yeah, All totally. Right. All right, you guys. <laughs> All right. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. We'll see you on Monday for Monday Night Draw.